everyone and welcome to this video on learning vocabulary. So we're going to talk about a specific strategy for teaching and learning which is using cognates. So to get us started we're going to try a little activity where I put you in your students shoes. Are you ready? Let me read you a story. Hans und seine Mutter leben in einem kleinen Haus auf dem Land. Sie sind sehr arm. Hans, ich habe Hunger. Bringe mir Tee und Brot, sang Hans' Mutter. Entschuldigung, Mutter, aber wir haben keinen Tee und auch keinen Brot, sagt Hans. Du dummer Junge, ich habe Hunger. Geh zu Markt und verkaufe etwas damit. Wir essen kaufen können, sagt sie. Entschuldigung, Mutter, aber wir haben nichts zu verkaufen, sagt Hans. Sei nicht so dumm, sagt, sagt Hans' Mutter. Verkaufen den Tisch, verkaufe die Stühle, verkaufe irgendetwas. Ich habe Hunger. Hans denkt. Einen Moment nach und sagt, wir können dort die Kuh verkaufen, aber ich glaube nicht, dass eine gute Idee ist. Sie gibt so jeden Tag gute Milch. Aber Hans' Mutter hört nichts zu. Ich habe Hunger, sagt sie. Bringe die Kuh morgen zum Markt und verkaufe sie. Nicht für unter 10 Euro. Do you have any idea what this story might be about? Did you recognize any of the words? It's a fairly famous fairy tale. Here's a hint. Okay. So what did you understand? Did you understand this, what the story was? If you guessed Jack and the Beanstalk, you were right. What was Te und Brot? Well, this was a story that was told in German and tea, te und, so German has a lot of cognates with English. At one point, um, English was a part of the Germanic languages. So a lot of our base words come from the same roots as the words in German. So you might have guessed that te is tea und and brot, bread, tea and bread. What is milk? Give you one guess, we drink it. And what does Hans' Mutter always say? Did you say, Ich habe Hunger? What does Ich habe Hunger mean? Hmm, I'm hungry. So if you guessed that Hans' Mutter was sent, sending him to the market to sell the cow because she was hungry, you got it. Now, even without speaking a lot of German, you probably used some cognates. To help you guess the meaning of the story. Well, what's a cognate? Cognates are words that sound the same in two languages and have very similar meaning. So here's a couple of them listed here in English and in German. Compatible, drink, learn, you could have guessed um, denkt, think, kuche, cow, hund, hound, cats, cats, <laughs> cat. A lot of the words are similar, as I said. In English, do we have more core words with Germanic origins or Romantic origins? We're talking core words, some of those basic everyday objects. If you guessed Germanic, you're right. Um, we, most of our core words are Germanic in origin, but we do have all our sort of $20 words are more Romantic. And Francophones tend to overuse cognates with Romantic origins. And the problem is that those have particular connotations that are not always appropriate to the context. It can create some confusion and we'll see how. Cognates can be very useful for teachers and learners, um, especially when it comes to reading and learning vocabulary. It's kind of like a cheat sheet. So when are cognates useful? Well, they're really useful when you're teaching learners new words that are similar in their first language, their L1. 
They're really useful for comprehension, especially. So if they're reading texts or listening to someone speak, it's easy for them to guess the meaning if they have cognates in common. When do cognates pose problems? Well, they co cause problems when the students are producing language, so when they're writing or speaking. So one of the things that you have to check with when you're deciding what vocabulary words to teach, go through the list and say, are any of these words cognates for your students? Are they ones that you might, they might know already? If so, you might not focus as much attention on them, but just perhaps um, remind them that they can, that the word is similar. For example, in my um, unit on insects, insect is the same word in French and in English with a slightly different spelling. So some strategies to use when you're teaching cognates. The first thing that you should do is really identify cognates with your students. Teach them to recognize them when they're reading and explain to them that it's a great way of guessing the meaning um, if they have a similar word. You can also teach them to identify the false friends cognates when they are writing or producing. The, uh, the vocabulary words. So for example, this is a really common one um, that's overused by Francophone speakers in Quebec. So they say, I am sportif. Now, while we do have the word sport in English, we never say, um, I'm sportif. It just sounds weird. We do, however, say, I am athletic. And that's it.